choke, no joke, cheeky choke, no joke. Choke, no joke, cheeky choke, no joke. You know what it is. About to go to this movie premiere. At the look, down in cinemas, over here in the ATL. You heard me? Choke, no joke, I'm outside, baby. You know how it is. How y'all feeling out there? We outside, all right? You see it. They got the red carpet jumping off. You know, I gotta give me a flick. I want the red kid to drop it. Let's see who out here. your man from BMF. Chilling. Oh, this is who should have it. 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 This is who should have
obstacles on set, off set, even at the end, you know, and um, one of the things I told Larissa, she called me one day and she was like, don't be defeated, like get up. <laughs> and sometimes you need somebody to call you and say, get up. So that was something that woke me up to just do something that I knew that I needed to persevere for because only 2% of people make films that make it to distribution. And we, everyone in this room is now the 2%, thank God. <laughs> and I'm just so grateful that he would choose me as a vessel to depict a story of what I believe speaks to anyone that is open to hearing just how we open doors to different entities that might not allow with the Holy Spirit. And you get all these things in your door knocking. <laughs> so that was my, my, um, the challenge. Challenge. <laughs> Ezra. 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 Okay. Um, I would say the, the hardest thing for me was to read the script. <laughs> okay. It was. Reason why. Reason why, because, you know, like Jen, I'm not a horror guy, and I read like half of it, and I thought, okay, I gotta put this down for a little bit. And I had to pray. Like, that's just honest. I had to pray. I was like, wow. But after completing it, um, pushing through the days, pushing through the obstacles, um, I'm, I'm happy to see the fruits of the labor for the most part. And the other hardest part was like through these obstacles, I, you know, just energizing my team. The team is very important to me. Everybody on set is very important to me. So just keeping the, the team going. Couldn't do it without them. I'm always going to echo that no matter which production I'm on. I'm always going to echo that. I can't do it without my team. And I wanted to make sure that my, my producers, my EPs, <laughs> and the network, everybody's happy. That's my biggest goal, and that's what I was driving to see today. Thank you. So the next question. 
question is going to be for the cats. Right. So Denise, of course, we all know you've done amazing projects, Tyler Perry, other independent projects, but this was definitely out of the box for you. Jill was a different type of character. So I want you to talk about why you gave this opportunity your yes. Same go for you, Jared, and um, John and Thank you. Thank you. Yes, hi everybody. Hey. You guys enjoyed it, right? Yeah. You know what? That was my concern. I was just like, okay, I hope they're not laughing. We're supposed to be serious. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that ever happened. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, um, shout out to everybody with USPS. I am so like, you guys are amazing. <laughs> United States Postal Service. So please, you know, I I wasn't really representing you guys. Okay, nice upstanding citizens. But, um, yeah, honestly. I'll be real. I turned this down three times. I turned it down three times. I was like, you know what? This hurt my spirit. I'm from Louisiana. We don't play with that stuff. But after a while, I said, you know what? Don't overthink it. Don't overthink it. And what happened was I, I was also looking at, like, say, the directions and this. And I was like, how the hell are they going to pull this off? Like, what? Somebody's eyes. What in the world is going on? But I started thinking again just ground this in reality. I've done a lot of drama. I've lost the baby, lost the man, lost that, but I lost my man again. I just kept my baby this time. Okay, yeah. And they've actually played husband and wife before. And he died both times. But no, it was just, it was an amazing experience. I had to talk myself out of being afraid and not questioning everything and just like I said grounded in something real and um, yeah it was fun everybody that I met on set everybody was really doing an amazing job to make this thing come together because yeah there were long days you know there were really long days but I think the village came together and pulled through and at, in the end here's what you got so thank you to everyone who made this So I'm just like, okay, this is our George Peele moment, you know. Sorry. So please go ahead and make a movie and have some fun while we're doing it. So, Jen, you did the damn thing. Yeah. 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 I won't like select anybody anymore, but I will pick the next person because I can talk all night. Okay. Jared, I'm keeping the mic. No, Jared. Oh. And fun fact, guys, about Jared. Before you start, in the scene, there was a scene where there's Jared Wayne falling down the stairs. Yes. Jared actually he did, did his own oh. stunt. Guys, you watched him all the time do that in off. So I'm trying to embrace your character. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, good evening, everybody. Thanks for showing up, coming out. Appreciate you. Um, yeah, this was, a, this was a great experience. I'm grateful to everyone involved. Great environment, uh, great crew, great cast, and uh, Jennifer, thank you for hitting me up. And I believe Lisa also made a to me, and so I'm grateful for that. To me. Yeah, thank you for considering me as well. I'm not the most bad. I don't know the most bad, so I'm just trying to get it out. I'm just trying to get it out. I respect. Right. I respect everybody that's helped me get here because um, when I when I saw the project, I was like, yo, this is. This is a challenge. Yeah. Like, I love a challenge. <laughs> I love when I can try to pull the physicality and technique, and, and then I got to chop it up with JP and just hear his whole philosophy, because I'm not too much of a comic book or anime person. So, you know, I learned a lot more from you in that world, and um, and I enjoyed it. And of course, I got to work with Denise again. Yeah. 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 Denise and I worked together. That was like, thanks to my man right here, Keith and, and others. You know, that was one of my first projects in, in the market. Yeah, yeah. So, so it was a nice uh, homecoming. Thank you. It was a nice homecoming. So, uh, yeah, it was just a great experience. I enjoyed working with the Shin brother too. Um, and uh, yeah, that's all I got to say. That's all I got to say. John Avery. Oh, okay. Yeah. There it is. Uh, hey, everybody. Hey. Um, I'd say. I'd say really this experience was 
a master class on what it takes to make a movie. I mean, just from, first of all, thank you to um, Ms. Jennifer Pasima for just allowing me to be a part. Um, <laughs> you know, funny enough, uh, Ms. Jennifer is actually really good friends with my family. So she's seen me grow up and like chase his dreams since I was like six and had really long dreads and I was like chunky and <laughs> saying like big words and I was like, you're six, what are you talking about that? You know, that kind of stuff. Um, and to be at this point where she trusts me enough to say that she, was, she believes in the, I love she used the word vessel, believes in the gift that God gave me enough to say, I want you to be a part of this vision that I'm bringing to life. Um, truly just gratitude. I'm working with Jared and Denise. Um, honestly, they don't really know how much I observe, but it's funny enough, one day on the set, I went into Denise's dressing room and I was just talking to her like, about what her preparation looks like. Because I felt like for me, being as this is one of my first film experiences, this was the best opportunity to learn as much as possible. Um, and just really soaking in as much as I could while also being as confident as I could to bring something bring something special to the moment. And especially my scenes with Denise, challenge her and to make her, to make even her work, cause she's incredible. She's absolutely incredible. So to be in the same space with these incredible people, even my man here, the work he did is absolutely not insane. Absolutely not insane. Um, Jay. 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 You gotta come up, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, the small joke when I, when he, when he was on set and he had this like, the group on his face, it looks crazy on the screen. But oh man, it was hilarious watching him pick it out of his face. <laughs> he tried to get it out of his beard. But um, no, it really was just an awesome experience and I feel like I learned so much. And to see it come to fruition here, oh man, what an honor. To Jay, you know, to, to everybody involved, oh, what an honor, what an honor, what an honor, what an honor. What's up, everybody? Uh, uh, happy to be here. JP caught me at an interesting time where I kind of retired from acting. I love it. Um, but <laughs> JP, we did a short together. What year was that? Man, 2016, maybe? Like 2016. Yeah, yeah. And I could just tell from there that that brain is a brain I wanted to continue to work with. So when he hit me up for this, it was a, a no-brainer. And then finding out that Denise was in it, my first time on TV, I was an extra on Meet the Browns. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I was hoping, I was like, oh, I, I hope I'm in the house. I hope I get to work with Denise. <laughs> but I didn't, I was in the school, I was with uh, Mr. Brown and, and Cora. But <laughs> for all these years later, it's, it's such a beautiful uh, full circle moment. And to get to play a role, I, I'm known for comedy. I do commercials and I'm smiling and I'm selling a product. Here's a can of Coke. Uh, but to to get something with some some meat on it, yeah. some substance, it felt good. So I wrote it for you, brother. I'm telling you, I wrote it for you. <laughs> yeah, it was great for you. I've seen your range and I love it. <laughs> but yes, blessings on blessings. Congratulations to everybody. This is wow. Man. Yes, ABFF, Jennifer and I, we said we're gonna work together one day. And serendipity and divine. That's how it works. So I'm just so grateful. JB, I mean, come on, man. This is way back. Way back. Quincy, this is way back. And now Denise, you know, and then Jared. <laughs> Here. I'm, I'm just grateful, truly grateful. I wanted to do something different. So when, the, when I auditioned for the role, I, I reached out and was like, we got something else for you. Said, okay, cool. Oh, they don't know. Wait. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They don't yeah. know. So he was one of the, he, all right, so you know, he played a therapist or who was his, whoever, the, a guy at the meeting. <laughs> but, but he also played that creature that was standing next to Wayne and spit out and like, and then, like he had to put on all of this like really cool stuff. And we gave you the mask. Yeah, I have to let me play. And I've always, that was one of my dreams to be able to embody 
something else. Yeah. And y'all let me play in that space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Jason. Thank you so much. So, guys, um, after filming Rat, we actually lost somebody super special to our cast. He goes by the name of Joshua Kelly. He is Quincy Kelly's younger brother. So we just want to share our love and support. Andrew. And, and Andrew, where's Andrew? He must not be here. Okay. He's probably somewhere helping someone, guys, because that is Quincy and Andrew. Um, but we have a super su a special surprise for you guys, Quincy. Quincy has literally been there every call, every, even during this situation. He was like, keep me in the loop. I don't, I want to be with you. I don't want to get discouraged. So I appreciate you, Quincy. Listen, we love you, Quincy. I think it could speak to the whole room. If you work on this project, you know what his presence made to the, to the set. To me, um, I just thank you for taking me under your ropes and just teaching me so much. And listen, I called Quincy, I was like, bruh, I need your help. I don't know what I'm doing now, I don't got no more money. He was like, I went away. <laughs> and I thank you for that, listen, forever. So I wanted to show you and Andrew something we got. <laughs> Keep the movies going, bruh. This is your dream, and you had your whole school on our set, two hours away, and you kept coming. Even when your brother passed, you kept coming, and you did not stop, and I just want to let you know, thank God. I thank God for you, and I appreciate you, and we all appreciate you, and we appreciate Josh. Choke no joke, I'm in the building. Shout out to Jennifer. Shout out to the whole cast of the despaired. Come out May 2nd on BT. I went to the premiere yesterday. Um, Y'all check it out. It will drop May 2nd on BT. I don't know what time. Check your local listings. No, you know what? BT Plus. BT Plus. BT Plus. Not BT. BT Plus. All right, let me correct that. Because I think there is a difference. But uh yeah, it was it was a good night, uh good movie. Y'all check it out. Um uh, that's my man, uh Tariq's sister, Jennifer, to uh produce that movie. So, you know. You got to go support your peoples, you know what I mean? Shout out to everybody that was in it. See my man from BMF in there. Uh, for y'all that have been watching the new season of BMF. I enjoyed myself. I had a good time, man. The boy choke, no joke. I had a good time, man. How y'all feeling out there? How y'all feeling out there? Mike make it in the building. What up? We got Jesse first in the building. Got Fatima in the building. Got the real deal in the building. AC in the building. Alexander, Alexander Gray in the building. No loose chat in the building. Walk on wood on the chat. Rasan in the chat. All right. Who else in the chat? All right, we got the membership gang, Darius Harvey in the building. All right, original choke, no jokesters in here. Crystal Hope, Mike Megity, got Steven in the building. All right, YouTube, I'm live on uh, Instagram, Instagram, I'm live on YouTube. You know what it is. Get it how you live. All right, Riz Lyricist just stepped in. Who else in the building? 
There she goes, 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 there she goes. <laughs> All right. You know me, uh, Rez, I'm always outside. I'm always outside. Despite what you hear about from these clowns who never be outside. Shout out to my man, Cisco. Shout out to Tammy. Uh, Cisco, I see Cisco, Tammy, they was in the building. Um, that's Tammy they used to go with, uh, oh, was married to Waka Flocka. I don't know her last name. Um, Mickey made it. <laughs> you finally made it, Mickey. We was waiting for you. Uh, Steven came in the building. All right, we here. They coming out. They coming out. Yeah, they didn't think this was alive. They seen the uh what you call it? Me playing at uh the screening to the spare. People ain't think this was alive. But if you seen the thumbnail, god damn it, you know what time it is. It's joke, new joke, new joke. Eugene Squills. <laughs> Eugene Squills. <laughs> we, we forgot his real name is Eugene Squills. <laughs> Y'all can't be calling him Gene Squill. It's Eugene Squills. <laughs> God damn. Eugene. <sighs> now nah, I done left the boy uh cry baby alone. And he done went back and got on his joint and tapped back at me. So here we go. Back to having fun. To the guy who went from a celebrity bodyguard to now the, the, the pool lifeguard or the pool bodyguard. You know what I'm saying? Sitting outside the pissy bathroom, smelling piss, telling kids to stop running. It's, and and uh, they got to take a shower and shit. But Eugene, okay. Eugene Squills. All right. Okay, we see you still out here squealing. Still out here telling. They done dropped some more uh, squealing episodes of you squealing. This nigga is such a rat tattletailing ass nigga. Dry snitching. Goddamn. Oh my God. Eugene Squills. See, now, a lot of y'all are getting charmed. And I ain't gonna even lie, I, I'd been charmed by the big teddy bear, Teddy Ruxpin too. I didn't know how much of a piece of shit he was until he turned on me and went out there, lied and stuff on me. And I really thought I made a friend. And clearly y'all goddamn fools out there 
They keep hitting my car. Oh, you know, a chain, y'all niggas. Y'all got all the squad shit. Uh, like, y'all don't see how much of a slimy piece of crack this dude is. And I was blinded too. I was charmed too. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Sometimes, you know, you seen the, the, the woman that, that, that fell for uh, King Kong. You know what I'm saying? That nigga was a big ass A10 shit up. But you had that one woman that just, she would climb, let this nigga take up to the top of the Empire State Building. And that's a lot of y'all women out there. Y'all letting this big ass ape take y'all all around like he not using you. Like he ain't use me. Like he ain't use Puff. Like he ain't use K Slay. You know what I'm saying? The nigga's a user. He's a user. And if you out there and you know him and you know he's a user, say amen. God damn, that was loud. Hold on, y'all. <laughs> I done heard that all around the world. <laughs> this nigga is a fucking user, right? Tell people who gave you the concept idea for your book, nigga, because you ain't have the money to license the picture for the, for the, uh, for the cover of the book. So who told you, yo, just darken everybody out and make a silhouette? The people will know who it is. The people know the picture. Who, where you get that uh, that genius idea from, nigga? Oh, oh. Your whole book cover. Every time a nigga look at their book, look at your book cover, they better think choke no joke. Who told you to do that, nigga? Because you ain't had the money to license to, to put that picture of Puff up on that goddamn album cover in Biggie. You knew you was going to have to pay. You knew Puff was going to be like, ah, nigga, you is not using my image. So who gave you the idea to use the silhouette? Me. But I never did nothing to help you, right? They smile in your face all the while. They want to take your place. Backstabbers. Backstabber. Yeah. Right? Let's move on. How many times you went on the Art of Dialogue and, and all these other channels and plagiarized and called me up, asked me how I felt about stuff, or I told you my opinions and theories on stuff, and you went right on these niggas and used my words and stuff and got a check. How many times does that happen? Nigga, you supposed to be giving me kickbacks for using my brain. Going up here. This is why you go up there and your story keep changing. You try to sound smart and take bits and pieces of what people tell you and go up there and sound stupid. Be jacking up uh, old sayings and shit. This thing you can't remember old sayings. Like, what, what, what's the one he jacked up? Oh, I don't shit where I eat. Right? Now, you know, heard a nigga say, yo, I don't shit where I eat. And shit, he get up there, he said, yeah, man, you know, because Miss Combs, she was trying to get at me. But, you know, I don't shit where I lay my plate at on the table to eat food. No, nigga, you fucking it up. It's I don't eat where I This nigga, yeah, because, you know, I don't, I don't. Shit where I put the plate of, of food and I cook collard greens and grits in the pot. Like, huh? This nigga take Confucius words and, and uh, 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 Gandhi's words and be jacking them up, boy. <laughs> Niggas trying to say a rock in a hard place and shit. Man. I was stuck between a rock and uh, two locations that was hard to get to. Huh? You know what I mean, man. 
<laughs> this nigga, that nigga always trying to say some some intelligent shit and and, and butchering it, saying some just butchering it and shit. Fuck out of here, nigga. <clears throat> First and foremost, let me say rest in peace to Rico Wade before I get into this nigga's pause backside. Rest in peace, Rico Wade, Dungeon Families, uh, the head of Voltron on on, on the, uh, the Dungeon Family, uh, one of the originators of that Atlanta sound, you know, one part of the Dungeon Family, one part of Organized Noise. You know what I'm saying? Much love to uh, Rico Wade, man. Much love. Rest in peace. Shout out to his family, the whole Dungeon family. You know, Goody Mob, Organized Noise, uh, CeeLo, Witch Doctor, Sleepy Brown, Outcast, Dre, Big Boy. Uh, Janelle Monet, Joy, everybody that's been a part of that that movement, you know, our prayers and condolences go out to y'all. All right, one love, much love from Choke No Joke and the Choke No Jokesters over here. All right, <clears throat> um, what you call it? Uh, before I get back into you. Gene Squills. Uh, I also want to talk about uh, Warren G gave us uh, a, a reply to Suge Knight. I don't know if any of y'all got to see that, but uh, Warren G gave a reply to Suge. Matter of fact, let me see so. I think I'm gonna replay that. Oh, Jesus. Okay, now Warren G replies back to Suge Knight for the collect call joint, right? Um, <sighs> the thing with Warren G is you kind of started it, Warren G. You brought up Suge on the Drink Champs. You talked about Sugar on the drink champs and made him respond. And now you acting like he attacking you when you started it, Warren G. Just being fair. Just being fair. You brought him up, Warren G. You brought him up. You brought him up. Hold on. Let me get into the business. Guy, copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976 allowances made for fair use of such as ugh, fair use for purposes such as criticism, common news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by the copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing nonprofit educational or personal use, use tips to balance in favor of fair use. And I am using this in fair use. And let's see what Warren G had to see to Shug. Night. Just got out the gym, <clears throat> doing my workout boxing. Um, sure, you're right. History would repeat itself. 
Because, nigga, you wasn't the only nigga in the room, nigga. You wasn't by yourself. It was other people in the room, too. I'm not going to say no names because, like you said, I'm not. We don't talk. So why you on here talking? Let that shit go, man. And as far as Snoop and Corrupt writing my album, you ask them niggas that. Them niggas ain't wrote my album. Corrupt helped me with Do You See? Snoop helped me with this DJ. Other than that, everything else I wrote. So that's where you wrong at again. And as far as the tough guy shit, nigga, do you recall when we was at the World Club and the nigga said fuck Defro and fuck NWA? Who fired on that nigga? Me. When you was at the comedy store fighting that little buff ass nigga at the comedy store, who saved your motherfucking ass? Me and C Style. So how am I, what have I done to you for you to, to launch out at me? Look, don't, don't, don't get mad at me, man. I ain't never done nothing to you, nigga. I wasn't signed to you. Shit. So cut that shit out, man. I don't poke at you. I don't kick you while you down, nigga. So leave me alone and you do your thing and move the way you move. And I'm going to move the way I'm going to move. That's it. That's simple. You know, I ain't tripping. I ain't going in and saying a gang of shit. I could, but I'm not. That's not my style. And I'm not going to get on no motherfucking social media talking about all that shit. Because all these niggas, period, a lot of motherfuckers on this motherfucker just running their motherfucking mouth. On open cases, closed cases, shit that's going on. All this shit is stupid, man. And for what? For clout? <clears throat> Continue to be a smart businessman, you know, and just handle your business, man, and get your ass out of jail. Shit, that's what you got to do. You know, like I said, nigga, I ain't got nothing against you. The shit was fucked up, period. The attempts that did happen with niggas you know, some funny shit with me when I ain't never done nothing to you niggas. Never. You know? But hey, I'm not going to even bring up the story when Bouncer sat behind you nigga at the awards. Talk about that. I'm not going to talk about it. Because niggas don't talk. Good day, man. Now, Warren, in all fairness, bro, you went on with drink champs and you talked about Suge and you talked about that incident. You can't be mad at him for having a rebuttal, brother. But that's that episode. That episode, Warren G's the first one to come out. That episode 15, Simon Says. I know niggas still got their ear to the ground and hear what Snoop going to say. We already know uh, with uh, the crooked cop, he coming tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Him and James, they be back next week on Vlad and 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 uh, the crooked cop channel, uh, the dirty pig channel tomorrow. Be expecting tomorrow. That nigga is trying to get his lie together now. He trying to figure out how he going to change that story about him going to the hospital and Shug told him it was Southside in the emergency room, he's going to find a way to spin that shit. I cannot wait to hear the lie this nigga going to tell. It ain't going to match up. It don't care. Nobody cares no matter what you say, nigga. But we we going to we going to sit back and we going to wait for this one. How you going to spin this one? How you going to explain you and Sharita on the phone talking about that Vegas incident. Oh, we can't wait. We can't wait. Should not heard y'all goddamn talking, having that conversation. Why would I leave a paper trail when I'm hiding him? Oh, man. Whoa. Well, Warren G was the first to come. Let's see who's next. Right? So... Since y'all all like to act like y'all boy, the big teddy bear, Eugene Squills, is such an innocent ass motherfucker, right? Okay, let me show you
Now, he's been cleared of the charges, but we know how that go, right? He's been cleared of the charges, but we know how that go. You listen to the story, and you tell me if this sound like your guy. Y'all remember this nigga kept crying about June uh, 2011? 2011, I was going through some stuff. 2011, I was going through some stuff. 2011, I I was getting in trouble and, and, and I was going through some stuff. I could have lost my job. 2011. Well, what happened in 2011? What happened in 2011, y'all? Let's see what happened in 2011. A New York State parole officer was cleared Wednesday of charges that he rushed to a T-neck parking lot while his car was being towed and drew his gun on the tow truck operator. Does that sound like your guy? The tough guy that be talking all that tough shit? Huh? Is that your guy? Let's see, he ain't squeal about this, huh? Justice delayed don't mean justice denied. A beaming Eugene Dale said outside the courtroom in Superior Court in Hackensack. After a judge ended his bench trial by finding him not guilty of aggravated assault. Several of, the, several of you squeals Colleagues attended the hearing and applauded when the judge Lillian Dialvi the Avelia Sabelli read the lengthy verdict in which she blasted the tow truck operator Ricardo Wilby and dismissed his allegations as completely incredible. She don't know who she talking about. Wilby sat on the other side of the courtroom looking distinctly unhappy. This is just a system protecting one of their own. He said later, if you are not a cop, then you are a criminal. If you go up against a cop, then trust me, you will be the criminal. Squill, who once worked as a bodyguard for rapper producer Sean Combs, parked his Mercedes Benz in the parking lot of a strip mall on Teaneck Road on September 18, 2009, and went across the, went across the street to get a haircut. According to the testimony trial, Wilby, whose holding-based company has contact with the owner of the lot to tow illegally parked cars, then arrived at the lot and began to tow in these Squill's car. Squill returned to the lot, and the two began to argue. Wilby testified that Dill pulled out his service gun and put it to Wilby's temple during the argument. Does that sound like the guy you talking about? Is that the big teddy bear y'all be talking about? Y'all know he, he was with Slick and the family. You know he was with saying gang. You jumping out putting guns to niggas temple at the, what you ain't had no money to pay the tow truck driver? You was going to take that man life? Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. That man pulled his gun, allegedly. Yeah, y'all say OJ still guilty, even though he was found innocent, huh? Let's see. We Dale returned to the lot and the two began to argue. Wilby testified that Dale pulled out his service gun and put it to Wilby's temple during the argument. Dale denied that he took out his gun. Y'all believe him? Several witnesses testified that Dale, who weighs about 300 pounds, fell on his back when the truck's tow bar slid and hit his heels, swiping him off the ground. 
Celebi ruled that the deal's gun must have come out of his holster when he took the tumble. Man, get the F out of here. And the do- an indictment charged deal with criminal possession of a firearm and aggravated assault by pointing the firearm. The weapons possession charge was dismissed. The same indictment charge will be, will be with criminal mischief will be later pleaded guilty to a disorderly person's offense and agreed to pay a 1000 in restitution for the damage to Dale's car. How about that? We need to get in touch with my man. What's his name? Ricardo will be. We got to look you up, brother. Ricardo will be. Let's look him up. See if we can find him, get an interview. Okay, I found him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're gonna have to find him. So now Now, your boy sit there and he talk all this trash about, nigga, I'm pimping the mailbox. I'm picking. I get the highest pitch. Nigga, the highest pitching is a hundred and something thousand. A hundred and something thousand. So you tell me, nigga, you sitting there pimping the mailbox. With 50 bands, 50 bands a year, living up top. Come on, brother. You pimp in the mailbox with 50 bands a year, and you saying you was getting the highest? Let, let, let me show y'all something. Look at this lady here. This person, the highest pension amount in the state of New York, right here, right? Kyra Ben Earth Hubertus, right? 500,000 a year. Okay, five hundred thousand, 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 thousand dollars a year. That's a half a million dollars a year. Just pension. That's pimping the fucking mailbox, bro. That's what you call pimping the mailbox, bro.
You see that? That's what you call pimp in the mailbox. That's not pimp in the mailbox. That's getting by. Okay, there's a difference. Big difference in pimp in the mailbox. I don't got no pension, motherfucker. I don't work for the city. <laughs> and since this is petty and childish behavior, you ain't got to be here. You can either shut, sit back and watch it, shut up. You ain't got to choose sides. Motherfucker, I don't get a pension. All right? That's the answer to, that's the answer to your question with that block. All right? Moving on. Right, nigga said he meant the highest potential, the highest pension divided by four, not two. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He already exposed me. Okay, he exposed me the other night, and then he exposed me the night after that. All right. Am I going to address the basement lie? Hell yeah! You want to address it right now? Let's address it. First of all, being that I'm not going to uh, play his footage back, I'm just going to show some pictures because so he don't have to, can't strike me. First of all, let's address what y'all call the basement, all that junk down in that hoarding has house that he called the basement. First of all, don't put your shit on shit on TV when your shit is fucking junky and need to be cleaned up. Now, who has a sub basement? Who has a sub basement? Y'all tell me this nigga don't live in the fucking basement? Get the fuck out of here. Y'all didn't see that nigga bending over the whole time when he was in when he was doing that video? Yo, let me show y'all. Let me show y'all. He showed y'all down there. He didn't go down in, in the basement to show y'all his bed down there. He just showed y'all one angle of the, all the junk and the clothes and, and the filth and the junk that was there, right? That shit is a hoarder spot. It's fucking probably food and all types of shit down in that shit. Filthy ass, motherfucking nasty ass shit. Yeah, let's address it. Okay. Now, this door here that he showed, right? That door there comes in right into the main area where the kitchen and the living room is where he live at. The basement is his bedroom. The nigga don't go up. He don't live upstairs. He don't live upstairs. And I got receipts. Right? Now look at this. Then he go upstairs and he show us the living room, right? Now, 
Let me tell y'all, y'all dumbass motherfuckers. This is for the dumbass motherfuckers, right? This nigga got all these pictures downstairs in the in the basement, on the wall. Gene Dale this, Gene Dale that, Gene Dale this, Gene Dale that, all over the big shit. Over. Soon as you come upstairs in the living room, he ain't got nothing on the walls of his shit. Nothing. Nothing. Not a family portrait, not his posters. None of his shit is upstairs. None of it. Right? Y'all saw it. Then he go upstairs and he show the couch. What's on the couch? More fucking junk. More fucking junk. This nigga, that shit is fucking filthy. I can imagine what it smell like in that bitch. Look at all this fucking shit on the couch. Y'all motherfuckers is stupid. Hey, y'all believe, yeah, man. I hate when people uh want to act slow, right? Then let's go here, right? For all you nut eating ass niggas, motherfucker, this nigga lives in the little house on the prairie. Fuck is y'all talking about? That shit is 1,600 feet. My apartment is more than 1,600 feet. I mean, square foot. His shit is 1,600 square feet. That nigga is a fucking 1,500 square feet by himself. <laughs> The nigga shit is 1,600 square feet. And he used to walking around in that bitch like a man, like it's some fucking mansion. Like, y'all niggas got to be fucking kidding me. Then, for all y'all that watched it, what'd he do? He stuck the camera downstairs and showed the dirty ass fucking basement filled up with fucking all kind of fucking clutter, looking like he need to be on the episode of Hoarders. Then he showed you the second level, which is the living room and the kitchen where he do his show and shit, right? He's talking about that's the basement and the sub-basement. No, nigga. That is the fucking basement and your fucking closet, nigga. You sleep on the couch in the fucking, in the, uh, in the suck, on the, in the, the basement. You got a basement in the cellar, nigga. It ain't no two basements in no house. Fuck you talking about. The basement and the sub basement. No, nigga, no, nigga. It's the basement and the cellar, Freddy. You Freddy Krueger, nigga. I know this nigga ain't called me no motherfucking drug addict. And that nigga's a motherfucking drug addict. Please don't put that shit in my goddamn chat. I don't give a fuck what he's saying, Michelle. It's only you I ought to block you. <laughs> right? Fuck it. Uh... Oh, let me get back to this. So then he comes upstairs, he shows you the kitchen, that the shared kitchen that he got to share the kitchen with, right? And shit. And then the motherfucker, he comes upstairs, is a, a bedroom to the left. He never goes in there. You never see what's in that bedroom. But this is his house. Why he ain't go in that bedroom to the left when he went upstairs? Because that was his fucking roommate's bedroom. Nigga, you ain't want to show who live in that house. Then he says, oh, and this is the master. That's the master right there, y'all. All he did was point the camera up there. You tell me that big nigga could fit up in them little bitty steps and go up in that fuck. That's the master? That little shit is the master. And he did not go in his... If that was the master, when he take you out of his master...
if that was the master bedroom, instead of him showing y'all his master basement and showing all this shit down there, why he didn't take us into the master bedroom? Nigga, I give you 24 hours to go in the master bedroom. I bet you that's not your bedroom. That's the motherfucker who owned the house bedroom. Yeah, your name on the D, but tell them motherfuckers why you in the basement, nigga. You know your girl family don't like you, nigga. Niggas is talking. You almost lost the house. And your girl family had to take it over. That's why you in the basement, nigga. Because you couldn't pay the fucking mortgage. Talk about it, nigga. Talk about it, nigga. Talk about it, nigga. Why couldn't you go in the master bedroom? Because it's not yours, nigga. You live in the fucking basement out of pity. Out of pity, nigga. Because you couldn't pay the fucking mortgage and them niggas took it over for you and they let you rent a room downstairs in the basement. Fuck out of here. Tell me I'm lying. You fucking degenerate gambling ass nigga. They letting you stay in the fucking basement, nigga. You paying rent in your own fucking house because you couldn't pay the mortgage, nigga. Stop playing. Why you ain't going in that room? Another room he just showed, flash by, didn't go in it. Why? Because none of his shit is in there. This nigga's fronting. Fronting. The master, you didn't go in there. Why? Because none of your shit is in there. You're fronting. Broke ass nigga. Hoarder. Look at all this shit. Why, nigga, how you got all these clothes in all this house? It's supposed to be just you in all this house, and you ain't got no place to put your fucking clothes? You just hoarding shit all over the place, my nigga? Look at this shit, dirty motherfucker. And then he go, now, I know y'all niggas seen it, because I know a bunch of you bitch ass niggas is in here fucking uh, in the bushes watching. Tell me when he went in that fucking guest bedroom, it was nothing but clothes all over the bed, and a fucking cat just jumped out the clothes like this. He talking about, oh, there go Mr. Fluffy. Fucking cat just jumped out the clothes like this. Nigga, Fucking room probably smell like cat piss. Like, who the fuck got clothes on the bed and the cat laying in the all in the clothes? The cat was like this. He's like, yeah, here's my other room. He cut on the light. Cat came out like, <laughs> like he's like, yo, turn the light off. Nigga, I'm sleeping. <laughs> Nasty ass shit. Probably smell like straight up cat piss in there. Who the fuck got they clothes with a cat laying all in they fucking clothes? Cat pissing and shitting with they asshole dirty and shit and wiping they shit all up in his clothes and shit. And shit the fuck out of here, nasty ass nigga. Whole fucking house is a, a hoarder's fest. This nigga ain't got a fucking cat, a fucking closet. A dresser drawer, a shoe rack. Nigga to my, yeah, all my kicks down there. Nigga, you never heard of a fucking shoe rack? Bare minimum, nigga. 
Put them shits in the plastic joints and stack them up. Do something, you hoarding ass nigga. Funky ass motherfucking place. Clothes all over the fucking animals jumping out and shit. Like, what the fuck is going on here? Nigga's a straight hoarder. Nigga out here fronting. Yo, my house, I got this level, this level, this level, and this level. And I would show y'all a picture of that house, but I ain't going to put this house on blast. Nigga, that shit look like Candy House. That, like, that nigga, if he's stand next to the house itself, that nigga had to be taller than the fucking roof. That nigga house is the fucking Chick-fil-A fucking little dwarf house. Nigga talking like he got some fucking mansion. Nigga, your shit is 1,600 square feet. You lay down, nigga. You 1,400 square feet your damn self. I'm tired of y'all giving this nigga a pass. Like this nigga wasn't no fucking criminal cop. Cops don't supposed to associate themselves with criminals. Y'all sitting around talking about, oh, he doing the right thing with Puff. He doing the right thing with Puff. Yo, Joe, you trying to protect Puff. Ain't nobody trying to protect Puff. This nigga sat there and was fucking running with the same gang. Slick in the family. These are drug dealers. Why he was a probation officer? How the fuck was he able to run around and do security with a bunch of criminals? But he was working probation. He how the fuck would he did twenty seven years? And let me chill for this nigga get his fucking pension snatched away. I ain't trying to fuck the nigga a little bit of money up. You know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to fuck up his little bit of money. But how could he have done 27 years and retired and he was working all those years at Bad Boy at the same time? How could he have been running with the same gang and being a parole officer at the same time? These niggas is drug dealers. How could he be running with Slick and the family and be a, a parole officer at the same time? These niggas are drug dealers. How could he be working at the parole office and running around with, with Bad Boy and getting in all these shootings and all this criminal shit and he worked for the, the state and was able to retire and get a pension? How's this nigga's story about being a celebrity bodyguard and he was a parole officer for 27 years. How does he retire from that and he was making money over there doing security all these years? Huh? How does that shit work? This nigga can be giving niggas guns or girlfriends. He can be giving these niggas girlfriends, bulletproof vests, shit like that, and don't get in trouble? How can he provide these niggas with weapons and shit and don't get in trouble? Bring guns from out of state to other states and not get in trouble. Ain't be able to retire. How the fuck he do that? Because you, Gene, squeals. He said he mad at Puff because Puff wouldn't give him 40000 for d because d Ferg Connect got knocked with some bricks. 
Nigga, you work for the parole office, the probation office. Why are you worried about D Ferg losing two bricks of cocaine? And, and if nigga, if you was balling and y'all niggas the same game was getting so much money, and you had all his jewelry and cars and all that shit back then, why you ain't give him the money? If y'all niggas was doing this so big, why did y'all have to go to Puff to get the money? For drugs, nigga. And you work at the parole office. Why are you going to Puff for money for drugs if you work at the parole office, nigga? And these niggas paying you a pension? I should have been a fucking probation officer. Them motherfuckers, is that stupid? You, your superiors must be the stupidest motherfuckers that worked in the probation department. How the fuck they couldn't see you working two fucking jobs and being around all these fucking criminals and you was able to retire? That New York State parole, them niggas must be so fucking lean and so fucking incompetent and so fucking stupid that you was able to retire and you had a whole other career that you out here writing books about, doing a whole YouTube stories about, and you getting a picture from these motherfuckers, they got to be the stupidest motherfuckers in the state of New York. Unless they planted you around these niggas for the shit that you're doing now. This nigga said to me, I eat buying guns for these niggas and all this shit. And, and they get up here and sit there and talk about it. Yeah, I gave the nigga my girlfriend, and he don't get, and he ain't in trouble nowhere in this whole shit. And y'all keep saying, "Oh man, he doing the right thing by Puff." This that that nigga's telling on Puff on purpose for money. This nigga's just as guilty. How many times he said he he knew a motherfuckers that that got fucking drugged himself, his fucking girlfriend. He the one that came out and talked. Told the uh, talked about it, and nobody is looking at this nigga as yo nigga. You sat around and was got all this money with Puff, and now you telling on him. And y'all niggas is jacking that shit, giving this a pass, talking about he was law official. When was he law official? When he was running around with fucking black hand in them niggas. When was he law official? When he was running around with same gang. These niggas is gangsters and, and drug dealers. He sat and watched all this criminal shit happen and was getting paid. And now he getting up here on YouTube and telling about all the shit that he saw and getting paid. And y'all stupid motherfuckers out here talking about, yo, that's his job. He was supposed to do it. Huh? Now, either this nigga was an undercover worker or y'all motherfuckers is bugging. And what he say? He, he did twenty seven years, right? And he retired. What he say? He retired like what, twenty eighteen or some shit? When he retired? Let, let's just let's say twenty seven years. How does it make sense to y'all that Gene retired from twenty seven years as a parole officer, but was a bad boy security?
How could Gene retire at 27 years? Nigga, Big been dead for 30. How can he retire at 27, 28 years and from the parole office and Big been dead 30 years? How the fuck was he bad boy security all those years and retired from the parole office, parole officer office, or whatever the fuck it is, probation office, for 27 years and Big been dead 20, 30 years? How? What kind of motherfucking hours was he doing at the parole office? I would love to speak to this nigga's supervisor. Show me this nigga's time card. Y'all retired this motherfucker from 27 years on the probation office. And he, he up here telling these story how he worked for Bad Boy for all these years? How? I, I, I'm going to call that parole office goddamn on Monday. I want to ask him, how does a motherfucker, y'all retire a person for working for 27 years on y'all thing? And this thing is on YouTube. Talking about how he worked for fucking bad boy, bad boy for about 20 years. And he get a pension? So when Big died in 97, and he out in LA for all that time, you telling me that ain't part of his 20 years? When he's at the Soul Train Awards in 96. You tell me he wasn't working at the parole office at that time? How the fuck was he doing that? Now, either he was working at the parole office or he was working over here at Bad Boy. But how do you go out of town and in California, we're big for fucking goddamn months, a months, weeks, and you work at the parole office. Somebody make it make sense. How, how does that make sense? For you to work for the for them for 27 years, right? 27 years. Let's say he started in 1990. 2000, 2010, 2020. Let's say in 2020, so... If we take two years off of that, then maybe he started in 88, 88, working at the probation office. If he retired around 2018 or so. You tell me he wasn't doing uh, uh, bodyguarding for for uh, Bad Boy in those 20, 27 years? I swear to God, I, I really need to ask somebody in that goddamn probation building. How can he have two careers and get a fucking pension? Like, I, I, I'm dead ass serious. Like, that nigga, suit, he had to be fucking his supervisor. And she like, yo, don't worry about it. I got you. I'll punch your time card for you. Like... What the fuck?
This nigga was around Chaz. Unique. Mecca Audio. Wolf. The same game, Slick in the Family. And Bad Boy Records over his 27 year period. This nigga said he was there for the city college shit. I don't know if he was working for the parole shit there. He was there for the Biggie death. Wasn't he around for the, the J Lo shit and the Shine shit? He was on the yacht when Kim got her nose broke. What fucking hours was he putting in that work at that time? He was there when Misa got kicked under the car. What hours was he putting in at that time? He's there when Big got killed. He was there when and Ja Rule came running out the room. There's so many incidents he did. When did this nigga ever go to work? When did this nigga ever go to work? The nigga still milking big shit. This nigga, his new book is called Bodyguard in the Life, uh, the by Life After Death, Bodyguard in the Hip Hop Star. Yo, my nigga, you was not Big's bodyguard. Now your fucking new book is Life After Death. Yo, my nigga, how long you gonna milk nigga shit? This nigga's the female superhead. Life after death. Like, come on, my nigga. Get off, Biggie Dick. How many more book titles gonna come out your fat lips? <laughs> you wanted to be on every last one of my classics. How many more Biggie titles going to come out your fat lips? <laughs> God damn. This nigga, like, this nigga named his book Life After. Like, come on, my nigga. Damn, man. Slew C's ain't even doing that shit. That nigga ain't New York undercover. He's St. Louis undercover. Yeah, y'all yeah, can keep believing this, this broke ass nigga all you want. I'm telling you. That nigga's out here lying and telling these stories for fucking money. I'm telling you, anytime you hear that cash app shit, that sound go off, that nigga, yo, oh God, thank you. Oh God, I could go buy some more lotto tickets. Oh, oh, thank you very much. Oh, my God. I can pay the light bill. Oh, thank you very much. I can buy some more drugs for the month. I get some more weed. Oh, oh yeah, I think Gene don't smoke weed either, too, right? Nigga, every time you cash out that nigga, that, that, that girl he be running with, that's his, look, that's his connect. That's his connect. So when he can't pay for it, you know, she fronting him. I, I done heard the stories. I, she I had to front him a, a, a couple of uh, three fives a few times. <laughs> That's why a nigga can't remember shit. You know what I'm saying? That motherfucker, that nigga be high as shit. Y'all just don't know it. That nigga's a fucking weed head. That's why the nigga broke. Fucking sitting there. 
Smokey, get up on this motherfucker tomorrow. Four scores and seven decades ago. No, 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 that ain't in it. That ain't in it. Four scores and nine months ago. No, that ain't it. That ain't it. <laughs> Yeah, this thing ahead is such a fucking liar. Yo, uh, Instagram, I'm, I, y'all got to come over to YouTube, man, because I got need my phone to show them some uh, Eugene Squills' uh, greatest clips. I got them on my phone. I don't know the timestamp on the on the YouTube, so I'm I'm gonna need my phone, Instagram. So uh, y'all come over to YouTube, please. I'll be back, Instagram. Let me get my copyright disclaimer up here. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976 allowances made for fair use of purposes such as criticism, common news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by the copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing nonprofit and educational personal tips to balance in favor of fair use. And I'm going to put this up at the top of the screen. Now, I'm using this under fair use. Shout out to Paperclip. You know what it is. Y'all can find the full clips on Paperclip page. All right. But I will use this under fair use to show y'all something about this dude that y'all think is such a nice guy. You know what I'm saying? Who think y'all is he's so rich and his big house and <laughs> <laughs> and everything but this thing is a scum piece of crap right let me show you this is what they do now first of all how this whole gene thing started is because all i said was you know when they the home uh h hsi home homeland security ran up in um diddy house and all that stuff started happening i said that gene was you know finally getting his just due he led this movement on on diddy and now things is happening so he got mad at me because i said that he led the movement on diddy which he did dude i don't know how anybody could disagree with that but if you disagree with it that's fine you know what I'm saying? But when I say shit, I don't say shit out of out of uh out of being spiteful malicious, especially for somebody I feel like is a friend. But you can't be mad at me for speaking on facts or current events when you in the current events. You know what I'm saying? You can't get mad at me because you my friend. If you in the news and everybody in the world is talking about it. And I say it, and I'm giving you your props, thinking that 
what I'm saying? You you don't because niggas in the comments is oh choke said choke said you you uh you spearheaded the Diddy campaign. Choke said you the one that started the Diddy shit. He did. As far as a uh a exposing all Diddy's dirt and the druggers of the juices around the bad boy people in area, the uh the assault in the women, you know, uh so on and so forth, all the shit that he's been saying, right? So now check this out. I say that, and he get mad at me as if I'm lying, right? But look, under fair use, what do he say? What did he say, y'all? They try to persecute me for being the first to come out. Huh? That's all I said, bro. That he was the first. And now this nigga said, yo, they trying to persecute me. Nobody's trying to persecute. Niggas are giving you your props. You brought this movement on. And then, so for all y'all motherfuckers that turned on me and mad at me, was I wrong? No, I wasn't wrong. And even he said it. So he turned on me for nothing. Out of being the emotional big cry baby that he is. So for all you people that turned on me, I don't give a f if you did. I don't give a fuck if you chose him over me because I told you, you ain't got to make a choice. But, but yo, for those who did, fine. But just know that I wasn't wrong and what I was saying was a fact because he said it his goddamn self. And we all know it. Who, who, who are we giving the credit to? Cassie now? Cassie just put that lawsuit out last year in November. Who was talking all that Diddy shit before Cassie? Outside of Mark Curry with his book, Dancing with the Devil, that shit dropped in like 2000. Mark Curry was not on this rant on, on YouTube. Mark Curry wasn't on no rant on YouTube. Gene started the YouTube shit. So my whole thing about it is Puff came out the office and plus Puff had did something very... Now... Here's where he talk about why he got fired from Bad Boy. And I want y'all, all y'all sucking niggas out here that keep say, uh, defending this nigga when it, when it comes to the puff shit. Never once, not once, not once has Gene Squill ever said something that Puff did to him that was wrong correct me if i'm wrong now once has gene ever said puff did him wrong it's always been about d ferg wolf 
wolf mother, puff on mother, Biggie, Black Rob. It's always been about somebody else. He has never, ever stated Diddy did him fucked up. So when the nigga don't do you wrong, and you going to fight because he did this person, did that person, did that person, did that person, did that person wrong. For you to come out and be telling all his business and trying to get and, and, and incriminate him and trying to get him locked up. What kind of nigga are you when you, every reason you got that he did something has nothing to do with you? Nothing. Now, here's his other reason. This is what they do. They try to work. Well, so my whole thing about it is Puff came out the office, and plus, Puff had did something very disrespectful for my man. Yo, to this cat right here. Paperwork, you getting everything, man. Hey, I'm going to stop fucking with you, paperwork. Oh, that's, that's the same. That, that's the, you know, I'm just fuck with you. That's the same gang crew. Mm. That's D Ferg, Mike Cop, myself in the middle. You see me with the glass. Now, why is this parole officer hanging out with a bunch of drug dealers? Right? Why is this drug why is this drug dealer hanging out with, I mean, excuse me, why is this parole officer? probation officer, whatever he is, hanging out with a bunch of drug dealers. Right? So he get ready to talk about, this is why he's mad at Puff, right? Because he did something foul to his man right here, which is deferred, which was not give him 40000 for two fucking bricks of cocaine that his man got caught with. Puff would not give him the fucking money for that. And he got mad and uh, D. Ferg had, I think, a heart condition or some type of condition, and he died two days later after uh, Gene kept going to Puff for that, asking Puff for that money, and Puff was like, no. And motherfucking Gene had $10,000 of Puff money, and he was like, yo, can I at least give him this 10000 And Puff was like, what 10000 He's like, yo, that 10000 that I was holding for you. No, Gene, give me my goddamn money back, nigga. I don't give a fuck about this nigga and no cocaine, nigga. So you a probation officer at this time. This is why you active at this time. And you going to Diddy. And you were so big showing this picture, talking about how you dressed and all this shit and how big you was. And y'all niggas getting so much money. Why you ain't give that nigga the money? Why you ain't sell your goddamn jewelry? High roller? Shout out to Paperclip. Y'all go see the full thing over there, right? Well, so my whole thing about it is Puff came out the office and plus Puff had did something very disrespectful for my man. Yo, to this cat right here. Paperwork, you getting everything, man. Hey, I'm gonna stop fucking with you, Paperwork. That's the same gang crew. Mm. That's D. Ferg, Mike Cock, myself in the middle. You see me with the glasses, mm. Rick Dog. That's ASAP Ferg, father in the blue, uh, the blue shirt. Don't he look okay. like his daddy young? Don't ASAP uh, Ferg look like his daddy? Mm. Mm. Okay. Wow. He did something so disrespectful to my man, and then my man died the day after my fucking birthday. Mm. Mm. Sorry to hear that. 
Yeah. I ain't fucking with you no more, mm-hmm. bro. Mm-hmm. But his mother was asking me to do something. Now, because he didn't give him the 40 grand for the cocaine, right? And D Ferg died. That's why he's not fucking with Puff. Now, what did Puff do to Gene? Nigga, you work for the probation office. Why are you mad he ain't give him no money for no cocaine? Now, imagine if Puff would have gave this nigga the money. What would fucking this rat ass nigga be doing right now? Telling on him, right? Yeah, Puff. I remember the time Puff gave the nigga D Fur 40 key, 40 grand for two keys of cocaine because the, the nigga his man got knocked. Wouldn't he be saying that right now? Yeah, your man's the East Coast, Reggie Wright. <laughs> Now listen what he say. So this is this is his last day at Bad Boy, right? Listen what happens. Sorry to hear that. I ain't fucking with you no more, bro. But his mother was asking me to do something to try to demean me, and I told her, "Yo, I'm not here for that. I'm not doing that. I'm not running to your car, getting nothing." All these interns, all these workers in there. You better ask them. I told her just like that. And she said, everybody do what I say about you. I said, I'm not here to do what you say. Now, you got to realize Janice is only about, I think, how old is she? Like, she said she's 70 something. She may be 10, 12 years older than me or something like that. That don't mean back in the day she couldn't get it. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> that don't mean back in the day she couldn't get it, but I wasn't trying to hit. Right. You see how disrespectful this nigga is? You see how disrespectful this nigga is? Talking about having sex with Puff mother? His mother? His mother, why well, nigga talked about my mother, so we already know we he ain't got no respect for people, parents, and a lot of y'all co-sign that dumbass shit, thinking that shit is funny. Uh, even these girls laughing, I I don't think that shit was funny. Him talking about that man mother like that, but sidebar, pay attention to why he gets. He, remember, this thing is a fucking liar. Like, I, I know y'all believe him, and he's he's, he's uh, charming to a lot of you fucking people in there and shit, but the nigga's a user and a fucking scammer. And I ain't know until you fucking, I, the, the truth came forth, right? But but listen to how he, he leaves bad boy. You understand? <laughs> that would be better she couldn't get it, but I wasn't trying to hit. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Because I'm the type of dude, I don't, I don't shit and lay my head down <laughs> where I work. So, I don't shit where I eat. McFly, come on, McFly. McFly. McFly, you fucking butthead. McFly. Stupid nigga. I don't shit where I eat. That's how I go, okay, brother? Shit. And lay my head down. <laughs> yeah, but I wasn't trying to hit. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Because I'm the type of dude, I don't, sh- I don't, shit and lay my head down <laughs> where I work. <laughs> so Puff heard her. Puff ran out the office. Now I'm the one that checked Puff about his own mama when he was cursing her. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. She said, he Puff said, yo, I'm tired of this. Why you always 
messing with Gene? Why are you always messing with Gene? People heard that. I said, man, I'm out. I ain't coming back. You know what? Gene, Gene ain't like that, y'all. I read. Y'all believe that shit? Y'all believe that shit? This nigga, yo. Now that I know this thing is a liar, like, uh, like a straight out liar, like he don't live in the basement. Like, why are you lying, nigga? Why are you lying, man? Don't you know your girl family got people out here, nigga, that know me? They saved your house, nigga. They paid, they paying the mortgage because you couldn't afford it, nigga. You are a fucking renter in your own home, nigga. Tell me I'm lying. I don't lie, nigga. Tell me I'm lying. You not a renter in your own home? You don't live in the basement, in the cellar? Das effects ass straight from the sewer ass nigga. Chill little 1600 square feet. Tell me I'm lying, nigga. Your ass would be out on, you would have lost that house if it wasn't for your girl's family, nigga. You better stop by your friend, nigga. You keep making my phone ring. That master bedroom ain't yours. Tell me I'm lying. That's exactly why you ain't going that shit. And you ain't going the other room. Because you know your motherfucking people's going to be like, yo, nigga, don't be showing my shit on YouTube, nigga. Take your ass down to the basement. The fuck downstairs, Freddy. Nick on the cellar dweller. Out here acting like you better than niggas. And you out here fucking struggling, nigga. A cash app will save your fucking life, nigga. You're a big ass uh, hungry man. Fucking degenerate gambling ass, nigga. And there's another thing for all y'all fucking women that be sitting there capping for this nigga and shit after y'all done heard him tell all these fucking stories about all these women that got hurt and abused when he was getting the check and never fucking called the police. Never. And now he up here telling y'all to my OG ain't doing the right thing. Why? Because the nigga paying them all that money to tell this shit? Lady been one of y'all fucking ladies that got raw, raped or drugged or one of that shit back in the day around these niggas. And this nigga up here telling it now. Like this situation right here. Here's another one for y'all. And I will never say her name. She is. Listen to this nigga. Is, is this? I know somebody, and I will never say her name. She is a doctor, mm. and she called me. She's a well-known doctor, and she was fighting the fact that she know the things that happened to her during that time. And she said, "Jean, I know it wasn't you. It was this bodyguard, and it was." Sean Combs. Mm. Well, can you get the videotape? Or have you seen the videotape? Do you know who has the videotape? And I said, no, I don't. And I can't. And I'm sorry. Yeah, and, and the fans... And she's a doctor now. The fans got the tape. The fans good, dog. Let... So now he know a woman that got drugged and all this shit. And, she, and he was there. And she gonna say, oh, Gene, I know it wasn't you, but... Well, allegedly, he was there, or I don't know why she asking him if he wasn't there, but she said, oh, Gene, I know it wasn't you. 
I, it was it was uh, allegedly Diddy and the, and, the, uh, and the other bodyguard. So you was around a whole nother situation, my nigga. And you would never say this lady's name and none of that shit. And she came to you for help and you told her you can't help her? And y'all women out here jacking that shit. Okay. 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 Y'all ain't got to explain to nobody in this goddamn comments why this nigga is, uh, why I'm addressing this nigga. Because if they don't know and they ain't following, oh, well, they could they just out the loop. But I ain't going to sit here and reiterate how the nigga did me dirty because I, I don't care if a person uh, choose him over me. I, I I deal with integrity. You know what I'm saying? I don't do that sucker shit. I, I don't go, I, I don't cross lines. It's so much shit that I could say about other shit, but I wouldn't even go there because I ain't got to stoop that low to this nigga. But the shit that he talking about, if that nigga throwing rocks at glass houses. Where's little house on the prairie? The nigga is a broke ass nigga. Capitalizing off of celebrity niggas. Now I know who he is. He's a fucking groupie nigga. That get around you, get information to, to so he can fucking uh, have some dirt on you to tell your fucking business later. That's who he is. A motherfucker with no motherfucking core values, no street values. He's a fucking dirty ass nigga that get around celebrity niggas and shit so he can soak up information being a fucking undercover cop. To fucking tell your goddamn business. Eugene Squills. Yeah. Eugene Squills. That's who all he is, bro. Y'all niggas giving this a pass. This, this nigga a pass. When he was around all these drug dealing niggas. He keep telling y'all about all these drug dealing niggas. But was a fucking cop for 27 years? How the fuck was he running with them? How did he ever run with Bad Boy if he was a cop for 27 years? To be able to retire and get a pension. When the fuck did he ever go to work? I swear I'm going to call that goddamn office on Monday. Like, can y'all explain this shit to me? How do a motherfucker work two jobs and get a pension from y'all? This thing is all on the, on everything, doing all these interviews, talking about a whole, he got a whole book about being a celebrity bodyguard, but got a pension from the fucking state. You can't work two jobs and get no fucking pension. Especially that type of job. Puff, you need to sue that nigga for copyright infringement for that Life After Death book. Still using Biggie name. Living off Biggie. Nigga, you wasn't even Biggie's bodyguard, my nigga. You was Puff's bodyguard. But you want to keep using Biggie to make a fucking dollar. Well, now you, you use Puffy to make two dollars. He might be the hip hop police. Because who's to say all the intel he was probably giving the police being around puffing them? Think about, think about it.
Oh, that's his job. Oh, that's his job. So why was he fucking running around with Wolf? Wolf wasn't no fucking probation ass nigga. Chaz wasn't no probation ass nigga. Unique wasn't no probation ass nigga. D Ferg wasn't no probation ass nigga. These are all drug dealers. Hey, yo, man, New York State be slipping, bro. They be slipping. I, I would love to speak to this nigga superior officer. Like, what fucking kind of supervisor was you that this nigga got a book? So my, my life as a celebrity bodyguard and he getting a fucking pension from y'all. Where the fuck was his office at? In Bad Boy? How does that work? Are there any cops in here? Or any probation officers in here? Can y'all do that? If he worked 27 years in the probation office, how the fuck was he doing all that security at Bad Boy, yo? Because if he was a correction officer, he would have to been in the jail all those hours, right? How could a nigga sneak out the jail and go work for Puff? Because if he was a correction officer, he couldn't have pulled that shit. Probation officer, them niggas is lean. They got to go out on the field and go and check people housing nigga be going for eight hours and they won't know shit they don't get supervised like that but the fact that this nigga out here with a whole fucking book and a hundred fucking interviews talking about his life as a celebrity bodyguard how the fuck y'all niggas is being sending this nigga money for a pension I need to look that shit up. I want, is that even possible? Parole can do it. He was a parole officer and a friend of mine was senior. So you can have two jobs and retire. So you telling me you could you can work as a parole officer and hang around uh, felons and hang around drug dealers. Which state you from? Oh, no, he's getting a pension. I just showed you his pension. You get fifty three thousand two hundred and nine dollars, and it started what twenty twenty. How the fuck this nigga get a pension, bro? So is if it started in twenty twenty, take off twenty years, and then so ninety three he started working. In the parole office, 92 and 93. That's after City College and all that shit.
So, so 92, 93, all the way up into 2020, when he started getting his pension, you telling me, yeah, that would be right. 93, seven years. That'd be 2000 and then another 20 years. Yeah. So 93. All the way to 2020, somewhere up in 2018, somewhere like that. All and he told me he his life as a celebrity bodyguard. And you got a pension for working for 27 years? How, nigga? How? Nah, you can't be with drug dealers, nigga. Said Fred just became a man. He already a member. That nigga, he... He just a member, member, member. He been a member. I said Fred is in the building. You already know. Down with the original choke, no jokes. This my guy. My guy, the Tesla guy. That's your Tesla guy. Hey, y'all that got Teslas. This is your guy. This is your guy. This is your Tesla guy. Oh yeah, now there's rumors out here that they started a grand jury in the Puff case. I don't know how true that is. I'll wait and see when the uh, grand jury transcripts come out, but they uh they out here saying that uh what you call it? There's a, a grand jury going on right now. So, like I told y'all, if something's going to happen, it's going to be between Memorial Day, I mean, before Memorial Day, 4th of July, the latest. But I don't think that Diddy's going to go down by himself. I don't think so. I think if he do and they come with a, uh, an indictment, it's going to be a Rico, and it's not going to be him by itself. It's going to be him. It's going to be Hoff. It's going to be uh, possibly Gene Squill. He's probably going to get picked up if he ain't already cooperating with them. And, I mean, he's already cooperating on YouTube. But uh, – Will they charge him along with him because he should be charged at, for aiding and embedding bare minimum, being complicit, bare minimum? But we already know if he if he ain't being charged, he's being uh he's being a witness. And he wants to be a witness. He already put that out there that he wants to be a witness, he wants to tell. But um for the sake of People like him and, and 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 the Reggies, who have badges but was around criminals and turned their eye to criminal shit and probably participated in criminal activity. I I hope that he gets a, a, a spank on the hand, bare minimum too. This way, it'll stop dudes from allowing these these fucking. These police niggas, knowing police, motherfucking probation, it don't matter what the fuck they are. Off-duty cop, they dad is a fucking sergeant. It'll teach dudes to stop fucking letting these niggas around y'all. Because all they doing is getting information to fucking snitch and take you down. 
That nigga's Donnie Brasco, bro. Jeannie Brasco. That nigga sat around bad boy all those years with all those drug dealers talking about Wolf is his man and, and Wolf mother this is why he, he feel the way about Puffy because Wolf mother this and Wolf mother that. Uh, blah, 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 blah. He disrespected somebody that I love. He disrespected this. He did this to Deep Ferg. He did this to Wolf. He did this to Wolf Mother. He did nothing to you, though. He did nothing to you. You can't tell us one thing he done to you. Donnie Brasco. Keep you dropping all these street niggas' names. And shit, and you a motherfucking on it. You a fucking internet fucking rat. He took the oath. He took the oath. He's a cop. Oh, here we go. I did have um one question. I um I just really wanted to know how um well I don't know really what you saw uh in your dealings with puppy, but how did it make you if, if you have daughters, um mothers, sisters, how did it make you feel to see or even hear some of the things that happened with um some of the young ladies and things like that and <laughs> Well, let me just say this. My relationship with Puff has a time stamp on it. And based on what you call him, it's the time stamp that I know about situations and know about things. You understand? So yeah. now, Puffy is not like Brother Love. Okay. Or Love. Puffy is not like Love. Diddy is not like love. Let me put that stuff. Well, like that. You know what I'm saying? When you get to the brother love and the and the love part, that's a whole different individual from what I know as Puff. Mm. Because my daughter's name uh, 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 has been to Justin's birthday party. You understand okay. what I'm saying? When they was yeah. four years old. When he was four years old and all the way up from one to four when he was giving parties for Justin, my daughters them used to go there. You understand what I'm saying? So yeah. my whole thing about it is this, is that I know that he's not the same person because when I was around Puff, Puff never used drugs. You understand? Only drugs Puff used was the, uh, the opioids that he was taking because Kim had ripped his arm with a corkscrew and I guess the pain was unbearable where he had to take something all the time and he got hooked on it. You understand? So, yeah. and, and drink champagne. So I, I don't know the allegedly Coke using brother love, uh, love. I don't know the ecstasy and the, and the, and the weed smoking and the Snoop Doggy dog smoking and all the other shit. I don't know that love like that, that brother love and that love dude. You understand? But to hear what I know or, or, or what people have said about him, um, I'm ashamed that he was even in our crew, the same game. I'm ashamed that he was even, you know, uh, uh, a dude that I was ever around. To think that, you know, 
he could be driven from being making music and everything to be doing some of the things that they said he did and the person he had become. I know he had a problem with his hands because he did his first baby mama wrong like that, Misa. Yeah. I know he had a problem with his hands because that's why Kim ripped his arm with the corkscrew. At which time, uh, he knew a problem with Puff having the problems with his hands with Misa. Did he report any of that shit? No. He knew a problem where he had a problem with his hands with Kim. Kim is fucking dead now. Did he report any of that shit? This nigga said, you right. It is crazy to hear a police officer bragging about being in the game. And New York State gives this nigga money every month for that shit. So he knew Puff had a problems with his hands. Why he never reported that shit? When he was getting money, because he was getting paid. Now you want to talk about, oh, you knew he had a problem with his hands and you ain't do shit? Fuck all y'all out here defending this nigga. Y'all slow ass motherfuckers. Fuck you defending this nigga. He knew this motherfucker had problems with his hand and he sat there and do shit because he was getting paid? Y'all some clowns. To be doing some of the things that they said he did and the person he had become. I know he had a problem with his hands because he did his first baby mama wrong like that, Misa. Yeah. I know he had a problem with his hands because that's why Kim ripped his arm with the corkscrew. But all that other shit, I'm mean, I'm ashamed to even say I know. Him. Okay, well, thank you for. Now he's ashamed to say he even know. Him. Now he's ashamed to say he even know. Him. After he done ran with this nigga for decades. Got all the money he could get out of him. And now he ashamed to know him. But he ain't ashamed to tell the stories about this nigga. How can he be ashamed to say he know him? And he's up here talking about this nigga every day. But he ashamed to say he know him. But you talk about him every day. Y'all need to stop, bro. Y'all, y'all keep defending this nigga. Y'all keep defending this nigga. It's all right. You ain't got to like me. I'm cool with it. But I know I, I got integrity. You know what I'm saying? And I stand on it. Straight like that. This nigga was a fucking police and the same gang. And he out here telling on Diddy. All right. Choke no joke. I'll see y'all later. Peace. No joke out here in DR. My man Delvin. See you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Dominican Republic. All right. Yeah. We here. Yeah. yeah. Choke no joke. Primo, you ain't want to give me no beat, so I'm stealing one. Take it personal. You know you my guy, Primo, love you. You gonna give me a beat after this one. I never thought that you would cry me, go against me, and backstab me. Third eye is strong, word is bond. Put you on the fakes, and now you won. I gave you support, and you play me. For those who play with butt, yeah, I'm talking. Breakfast club, revolt, whatever. All I know is birds of a feather hang with those that they hate. Once the realness, now you fake, and I see through you. What you gonna do when they book you and your dude shoot? I know you think I'm expose you. This ain't no threat, take it personal. Choke no joke. 2023, it's all me. You hear me? 2023 is all me. 
They say, why I don't come around the game? Cause all y'all dudes undercover gay. And I don't play those fucking games. Yo, stop the track, I'm fucking slay. Rest in peace, K Slay, man. Let's get to the next one. Choke, no joke. Jack Graham. Yeah, now. Choke, no joke. Jack Graham. Yeah. This way, ATL. In New York, sound like. Let's go. Y'all hating ass niggas, I see y'all. Show get busy, that's why I got the crown. Hate in the air. You clowns, I see the envy that you breathe, jealousy. What you need is your own damn hustle. Stop worrying about mine. Nigga, I'm popping cause I put in time. Came out modeling, camera in hand. Still get busy with the mic in hand. Streets pulled out, niggas got sprayed. Niggas turn on you when they see you get paid. The intimidation in your face. Where's the love? What's taking place? You want my gold and my ducats. Cause my money overflowing out of buckets. Shot him in public. Made people holler, scar on his face for the money and the power on the Choker Choker The truth in the industry made me the Choker 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 The truth in the industry made me the Came at me fool, got in, was young So talent made you rich, damn was dumb More to make, cake from crumbs You gotta be sweet, G or native tongue My heartbeat went into overload When Larry tried to turn me into a mole Told me show my curly to the CEO I didn't think it's funny, so his jaw hit the floor And grabbed that chair that broke his back then realized that's a hate attack Harassment comes assault, you in the maze No way out, like Puff and Maze Touch me, tease me, I catch a case Nigga, you ain't straight as your poker face Father Law God, in that game I fold This sun don't tick, demon time don't hold I'm the Choker Choker the truth in the industry made me the choker. 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 The truth in the industry made me the choker. Choker. The truth in the industry made me the choker. Choker. On the ones and twos, Chosa. what y'all wanna do? I'm here now. See the wall, stand up. Shout out to the bomb squad. Stay the hell. Don't follow those cats. Niggas that be on the ground. Tell Bobo what they doing. They doing. <laughs> choke, no joke. You know what it is. Yo, y'all niggas with a stay DL. Down low. Stop flossing, man. What you, you, what you just. You just want them to just come and get you. Learn from my mistakes, man. That's what this is about. Learn from mistakes. Choke, no joke. Let's go. You already know. Make a love. Let's go. My aim was enlightened, drop jewels on you. You thinking I'm jealous, I ain't got cheddar like you. I'm the dude to a game, you got school. Was a local cat, snatch you when I made moves. I'm paranoid and preaching, you was sleeping. Knew you was sneak deep and couldn't see us beefing. Learn from mistake, no sure I got cake. Impress a nigga to rob me, bitch in my face. Get knocked by the fans, lay up four by eight. Ass so busy flossing, ain't thinking about Jake. Loose, yapping, they wiretapping, videotaping, your ways in action. Front like Tom's hard, got a two door garage. Ice like Liberal, with no damn job, without a reasonable doubt. You think you Jay Z with your platinum jewelry? He got a job, B. You shining on doctors.
with four degrees. Laugh because I'm broke, I'm broke on the streets. Stay DL, be DL and sell. You ain't DL when your name ain't Bell. Stay DL, be DL and sell. You ain't DL when your name ain't Bell. Stay DL, be DL and sell. You ain't DL when your name ain't Bell. Shh, 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 let's go. For beef, we not dolo. For cash, you go solo. Thought I was your man, shot me down like Manolo. Thought I was your partner when you played me was whack. No niggas dust that I wouldn't flip like that. What give? See your man struggle while you live? That's some shit. Struggling, give you the kicks. Used to stick for gooses. Warm when we pump deuces. Break night in the jacks, trying to see millions like Bruce. Love. You don't act like you used to. I'm the dude. When niggas was friends, you like, yo, choke up. I wet you like McLean for those who claim to be pain. The game of death, that's what you get when got game. Ill with automatics, we never static. You carry that niggas, put one in your cabbage. Fear, don't have it, you fill me with laughter. In OG and C, then I'm original gun clapper. Like Dan Gadapper, see a mill be Casper. They trade the doctor, the map for master. Say DL, DL and Sal. You ain't DL when your name ain't bad. With your pockets, cop the ice locket. Yeah. She's somewhere in Houston, you blew like a rocket. Her seed was bait, through the line she caught it. Gave her all that loot, she couldn't afford it. Frying to them bitches, y'all feeling hell. Blue puff in your face, daddy, all about Benjamin. Remember me, I'm your friend to the end. Like Chucky, used to slay bitches like Bucky. Thinking why they cuff me, think of the luxuries you had. In the cell with other willies, you brag. I pushed the big bends for 20 year trim. When in the club, it's for all my men. Sitting across the bar, what's up, star? Back to reality, you back in bars. You chose not to listen, had the age class glisten. Knew the rules of the game, you played yourself my position. Stay DL, be DL and L. You ain't DL when your name ain't Bell. Stay DL, be DL and L. You ain't DL when your name ain't Bell. Stay DL, be DL and L. You ain't DL when your name ain't Bell. Yo, son, yo, son, yo, son, that son is me, yo. I see. You ain't noticed me, yo. I see, All these man. diamonds and stuff, yo. How can I? Uh, uh. Choke, no joke. You already know. <laughs> Y'all know I love that cooch. You know who this is. I love that cooch. Uh huh. Mm. Yeah. It's the A thing. Clean. Let's go. Yo, what's up? My nuts when I wake up. Got more wood and I just bust one. And my hog and knee, I'm Ron Osley. Between the sheets, and she want to ski. And just shout with me with what I thought was pee. She rolled the D, her water broke B. Not pregnant, but baptized me. I'm down for more love, but change the sheet. She said, please, I want more. Next thing I know, mash is dripping the floor from her juices. Oral oh, had me stoned, had a Korean and Medusa at one. And when I look in her eyes, between her thighs, I tell you no lie, ain't shit won't buy. I raw to take it for me to taste it. Red lobster, pussy, biscuit, freshly baked. Uh, eat that coochie all night. She spray my face like sugar spray. I love her. I eat her coochie all night. She spray my face like sugar spray. I love her. What's up, my nuts when I wake up. Got more than wood and I just bust one. In my hog and knee, I'm Ron Osley. Between the sheets, she want to ski. And just shout with me with what I thought was pee. She rolled the D, her water broke B. Not pregnant, but baptized me. I'm down for more love, but change the sheet. She said, please, I want more. Next thing I know, match is dripping the floor from her juices. Oral had me stoned, had a Korean and Medusa at one. And when I look in her eyes, between her thighs, I tell you no lie, ain't shit won't buy. I'll rather take it for me to taste it. Red lobster, pussy, biscuit,
freshly baked. Uh, eat that Gucci all night. She spray my face like Shook Sprite. I love her. Oh yeah. My man had to come through and make sure it went through. Y'all niggas is in trouble. Choke no joke. I ain't no joke to mixtape. We here now. You already know. Let's go. Choke chillin', gotta wait for them billing. Ain't shit really changed though. I'm still that villain. I'm making money with rhyme. Fuck black on black crime. Beef and money don't mix. Like Muslims and swine. I'm talking milk, penicillin. Y'all be illin'. Y'all be thinking y'all killers with your school face grillin'. Kick that bullshit to me. Y'all be wet though like Bruce Lee and Brandon and Hearst on the highway to heaven. Man, you making mad threats and stuck in one section. I'm OBP like Naughty, making connections. Talking under your breath, get you something you don't need. Two fully loaded Macs, filled up with heat. Nigga, you sweeter than 30 days for a body Pop shit to these niggas See me walk by me But I ain't looking for no beef I don't eat bologna But I bring a whole cow If you run up on me Shiesty Try me and hype me To peel your wig back Like 10 cent icy Bring it, stop bluffing I got you threats, they mean nothing I respond like Bond I come through, I'm bombing Playing bodegas Flipping Montega You tan in the jacks I tan in Jamaica, Vega, when bust if he raped ya, your chick out blazed up, hit it like Jada, why you blew up a pager, had a brief like Vader, your star at war, with the lightsaber, I'm here to lyrically tear you, rare nigga, you a spear, I jack you up, now you out of here, throw me on the 600, now fuck your nigga humming, blowing down a path with a bad bitch blunted, I take it there, y'all niggas don't want it, y'all niggas don't want it, y'all niggas don't want it with no joke, who you thought it be, represent the NYC, bring it on if you niggas want some of me, have y'all niggas feeling it like Jay-Z, uh, no joke, who you thought it be, represent the NYC, bring it on if you niggas want some of me, Bronze King like the L-O-R-D, F-I-N-E-S-S-E, uh, and that bullshit y'all do, y'all niggas don't stress me, oh yeah, and you already know, eat and war what it is. Joke, no joke. I ain't no joke. The mixtape. We here now.